Thanks for being with us today. I'm Nate Eaton and our guest needs no introduction. If you've watched television at all over the last 40 years, has it been 40 years? Well, I've, I've been in the business for, um, for 42 years actually, but okay. I've been here for 35. 35 years. Yeah. Jay Hildebrandt recently retired from Local News 8 after being in our homes for decades. How does it feel? Does it feel real, Jay? You know, it, I, it's uh, almost surreal, I would have to say, because it's something I haven't experienced before. You know, you kind of think about retiring, and I knew this was coming for, for a few years. I kind of planned that this would be about when I would end my full-time career at, uh, at Local News 8. Yeah, so it's, it kind of feels um, strange, and it's just hard to describe. People say, you know, what are you going to do? How is it going to feel? And, you know, until I really have done it for a while, it's, it's really hard to know how it will feel. That's a lot of nights. A lot of nights. I mean, yes. every night for the past years. Because you were brought into Idaho Falls to anchor. Yes. Okay. It came as an anchor and as a news director at the time, as a matter of oh, fact. Oh, wow. So yeah. you were running the newsroom. Right, right. And a lot of people come here, stay for two or three years, and move on. Was that right. your plan when you came here? You know, I wasn't thinking just how long I would stay. I, by that time, I'd already been working in the business for seven years. And what attracted me was I wanted to keep anchoring and reporting because I enjoyed that. But when I was in Fort Wayne, my job just before this in Indiana, I kept thinking, you know, if only I were news director, I would do things differently. <laughs> <laughs> and so this, uh, I, I just saw this, this uh, ad come up in commu Communication Magazine, and it was for news director and anchor. And I thought, you know, I enjoyed living in Twin Falls for my first job. And I thought maybe that would be kind of a fun challenge to do that. And so I came back to, to do both jobs. And it was a fun challenge for a while, but then it got a little overwhelming to do both. Explain to people what a news director does. Well, the news director is really in charge of uh, he, the whole department. You know, it's, it's hiring, it's budgets, it's, it's just setting the plan for everything that's going to be happening, daily planning meetings and, and things like that. And, uh, and I was anchoring at 10 o'clock and would be coming in at, you know, 9.30 in the mornings to to have some of our senior staff meetings and some of our planning meetings, and it was um, it was overwhelming. Uh, after a few years, I thought, let's let someone else do that part of it, and I'll continue with the anchoring and reporting. When you started, was Carol Honus your co-anchor? No, she came back in 1984. I mean, I mean, 1990. It's it's interesting. We both started in 1984. She started. I know. I mean, started in 1977 when we graduated from from uh, college. She actually started at Channel 6 and was there for a few years. Then she had a family and stopped working for a while. And uh, I started in Twin Falls at the same time in 1977. Came back here in 84. And then uh, she came in 1990. So we've been together almost 30 years. Almost 30 years. That's almost unheard of in local television. You know, I haven't done any studies and I, I don't know just how you would figure that out, but I haven't heard of it happening. That's a long time to be yeah. together, and f for you to stay at the same station. So once you be once you became s solo anchoring, you know, rather than being the news director and anchoring, w did you ever plan to leave the market? Did you ever think I'll go yes. somewhere bigger? I did. I th I, I thought I might. I um, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I really wanted to get back home there, and I thought that would be a really nice place to to be. But then my um, my mom moved out to Utah, and my sister was there, and then later I thought, well, maybe, I, you know, Salt Lake would be a better fit for me then. And I tried all of them. I tried when I was in Fort Wayne, you know, whenever there was an opening in Milwaukee to get back there. But, you know, the business then was even more competitive than it is now. So every time there was an opening in Milwaukee, they would get like 50 audition tapes, and I never quite made it there. Salt Lake, uh, you know, many years ago when the kids were still little, I had, um, I came really close, I was like number two, you know, Spence Kennard called and I said, he said, you know, you've been trying this for a long time, this weekend job might just be for you, and he said, later now we hired someone else. So at KSL. Had, yeah, at KSL. Wow. Uh, and then I, after a while I thought, you know, the family is established here, I had a job offer in Reno and flew out there and I thought, I just would rather, you know, stay in Idaho Falls and I, I was happy here and I didn't rule out something else but I stopped actively seeking probably 20 years ago. You have covered a lot. Were you here when the Teton Dam broke? No, that was in 76. 76. Yeah. So you came a few years after a that. A few years after that, but I mean, the legacy lived on, and uh, Laurel Porter and I did a big hour-long 
10-year documentary on the Teton Dam. Then uh, she left for a while and was back for the 20-year anniversary. We did a 20-year anniversary one. And then Carol and I did a 40-year anniversary one a few years ago. Uh, these were you know, hour-long documentaries, uh, talking to the people that had been involved and using some of that old footage of the house floating down Main Street you know, in, in Rexburg. So I feel like I was there almost because I've done so much with it. One of the cool things I love that you do on Facebook is these Throwback Thursday clips where oh, yes. the, your old reports, it's just so fun to see the old footage and the old Rick's college days, you know, yes. things with like that. With the big hair. Big <laughs> hair and old computers or before yes. computers. What would you say is the biggest story or, or one or two that you've covered oh, over Some of the, the biggest ones, well, I would say um, the Yellowstone fires of 88. Mm -hmm. That was a big one. We had <clears throat> all the network people coming here and we would help them out a little bit with uh, you know, how to get around the area. Uh, that's a big one that comes to mind. Um, you know, actually the eclipse was really a huge, oh, yeah. huge story too, just a couple of years ago. Those are two that come to mind immediately. There were some other, uh, oh, there's the floods of 97 was a pretty big deal. And we've had some minor flooding since then, but that's one that washed out the Rose Road Bridge. And was, that, was, that was a quite the story also. How has the industry changed over the years? What would you say are some of the biggest changes? Well, there are, there are different areas. First of all, there's technology, which has changed immensely. When I first started in Twin Falls in 1977, we were still shooting on film, and we were a very low budget station. We had a five person news department, you know, just the total number of people were there. The news director was also the sports director, and. On the weekends, I did news, weather, sports as a one-man band. For, <laughs> and produced, too? And, yeah, everything. You did the whole show. Wow. I put in the, the graphics and, and all of that. Wow. But um, we, So we were on film, and uh, at first we didn't even have teleprompters back then either. And, but the, we could only shoot five minutes worth of film because it was expensive to process. Uh, so five minutes a day was our budget. And then we had to put it on the Greyhound bus to send it to a TV station in Boise to process because there were no film processors in Twin Falls. So came back the next day at four in the afternoon and we had a 5.30 newscast. So, Holy smokes. So yeah. all your footage was a day old. It was always a day old, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to put together the story in like one hour. So. Oh my gosh. But then eventually they got uh, three quarter inch videotape. Wow. And I thought that was the greatest thing because we could just shoot as much as we wanted and didn't have to worry about uh, you know, the time limits. And edit it there in house. Right, yeah. yeah. That happened probably in about 1979 or so. And now of course it's all on digital Yes. Right away. Oh, a cell phone, really. It's just right there. Any of those things. And then, and then the computer, I think, was in so many ways made such a huge difference. Uh, you know, first of all, in, in being able to actually write scripts and fix your typos instead of just typing them on the big pieces of paper and, uh, and with a large type. And then eventually the editing on computer made it uh, so much easier too, rather than tape to tape. So technology-wise, that's been a big change. Have the, the stories that are covered changed over the years? Do you find television kind of going a different direction versus when you started? Uh, not, not terribly different. I, I've seen things, I've seen kind of the pendulum swing where sometimes it was more featurey, uh, was sort of popular, and other times it was more just the hard news, you know, just the facts, ma'am. Depending of on the consultant that would Depending come in. Depending on the consultant was yeah. part of it, that, yeah. that's right. And even just the, the viewers kind of changed habits. There was a time when health news was just really, really big, and it's still important, but research has shown it's not quite what it used to be. So people's tastes change a little bit, but as far as what we cover hasn't changed a whole lot. How it's covered, we haven't um, changed a great deal, but I think the networks, that's where I've, you know, cable news, the other networks, has just changed in a way that, to me, is, kind of dismays me, you know, the direction that it's gone, where it's it's so much opinion, um, and even in what should be the, the um, not the opinion shows. I, I see a lot of opinion, and, and then it's, um, you know, one cable channel, it's more liberal, the other, it's more conservative. And we were just taught that you, you put your personal feelings and biases aside, and you just report the news. Um, and I see that's, that's really changed, and I, I think it's not a good thing. Do you have members of the public that come up to you and talk to you about that, that I don't watch you anymore because I don't trust oh. you or, or, or things like that. On a local level, I don't think it's 
dealt with as much as on a national level, like you mentioned. Not as much. We would get emails saying, you know, I, you're, you're covering all this stuff with President Trump, you know, way wrong, and so I'm not going to watch anymore. And in a lot of the cases, we don't cover the national news, and so we're reliant on CNN or ABC, and, and people sometimes feel that they have a slant. Yeah. So I remember the first time I met you, I was a, a college sophomore. Do you remember? I, I remember. I came down to Channel A. We were doing, they had, BYU-Idaho was launching a show called Latter-day Profiles. Yes. And you were one of the first guests. I think the very first one. I, I was kind of the guinea pig. Yeah, yeah you yes. were. And so uh, I, I chose to interview you. And I remember mm -hmm. going into a conference room. I think Ricky Brady was in there with her dog. Yes. yes. And we, I interviewed <laughs> you. And um, I remember you said, when we, we talked about how a lot of people think news is only bad news, yes. that you said at, at the end of a newscast, if you could draw a line down the middle of a paper and put positive stories and negative stories, that you would hope there'd be a balance. And I've yes. never forgotten that, mm -hmm. as far as even the way we kind of run East Idaho News and the way I've done that in my career, how it's important to have both the positive and the negative. Right. And you, you've really kind of emphasized the positive news, I, at least from what I've seen over the course of your career, doing features on the arts, mm -hmm. education, Wednesday's Child. Right. Talk a little bit about those things that you've done. Well, you know, everyone has their own passions. Um, and in news, we have to sometimes step outside our passions. Um, you know, and I, you know, a good hard news story can be kind of exhilarating to work on, you know, too. Also, there's the Yellowstone fires or something. I mean, I hate to see people get, get hurt, but you know that people are really counting on you for, for the information. And that's something that I find kind of exhilarating and rewarding that we're able to offer that to them when it comes to hard news. But my passions more have gone towards children, arts, good news stories. So I did Wednesday's Child pretty much the whole time I've been here, sometimes more than others. Um, I did a distinguished student report for several years, um, a student of the week basically. Uh, and then uh, I did a great neighbor report for a year or two, or just focused on people that were doing good things in the community. And those I found especially rewarding. I mean, I'd come to work and i think, well, I can't hardly wait to get to work to edit this story and see just how we can put together the sound bites, you know, maybe add a little music and have them singing their big finale number from the high school musical or things like that. So you're right, that, that has been more of my passion than some of the other kinds of stories. Is the modern anchor man dead? <laughs> I don't want to say dead, but another team where there's 30 years of, of a Jay and Carol? You know, I think things are changing there and just the landscape is changing. So the way that I look at it is that people will still need information. They'll still want information. How they get that, I mean, the platforms are changing, just like you see on East Idaho News. People are getting, I see you have millions of, of hits on your, you know, on, on East Idaho News. Uh, and so that's something that uh, I think is going to continue to evolve more in that direction. In 10 years, I don't know if we'll even have over-the-air broadcasting. You know, it might just all be um, just through the internet or, you know, or satellite or whatever the case may be. Uh, so I think that'll change, and I, I kind of think that They'll still need someone to deliver the news, but I, I think it may be changing away from the personality-driven thing. Like, they, well, this is the anchor I want to watch, and it'll just be somehow getting the news from somebody, but not have that same loyalty, you know, like it has been in the past. There's so many people that have told me once you and Carol are gone, they won't watch the evening news anymore. I'm sure, <laughs> have you heard that? I'm sure you have. Uh, uh, I, I, I find it... Um, kind of flattering. I'm not sure if they really mean it. I think it's just they're just trying to be nice. <laughs> well, well, Idaho Falls is a beginner market for a lot of reporters that come mm -hmm. here. They stay two years and then they're out. And you and Carol have been a constant in delivering the news. And, yes. and Todd Coons, who came back. Mm -hmm. So I, I could see that people want familiarity, especially during times of tragedy and hardship. And yes. you, you have been that. Yeah, I, I, and, and I find the same thing. I, I, I was sad when Tom Brokaw retired, you know, and I was sad before that when John Chancellor retired. <laughs> uh, and, you know, even Huntley and Brinkley because you got, got so used to them. But you eventually, you know, I, I got used to the next anchor. I like, I like David Muir quite well now and yeah. some of those people. So it takes some time to get used to someone new. I'm sure you're asked, how do you uh, keep it together when you're reporting the hard news or the sad news? How have you coped over the years with the depressing stuff that you've got to cover? You know, it's, uh, it's sometimes a little bit difficult. Uh, 
especially the really sad news, and actually the ones that bring me closest to getting a little emotional are generally when the dads come back from Afghanistan after a year and reunite with the, with the little daughter at school who's doing a program, and there are hugs and tears and things. And, um, but you just, sometimes I actually have to kind of disengage myself from the story and make sure that I'm not watching the monitor to see it happening. <laughs> Look at the prompter. Yeah. That's right, just uh, think of something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure live on air, you never know what, what your reaction will be, especially right. if you haven't seen the video beforehand. Yeah. What will you miss the most? Uh, well, I think I will um, probably, <clears throat> the people I work closest with, you know, Carol and I have been together for almost 30 years, and so we're just kind of like family. We get, we get together once in a while with our, our families, and we, uh, during commercial breaks, talk about our, our kids. They, we had kids the same age, you know, growing up. And, you know, my kid did this and yours did that. You know, what, what can we do about it? You know, and so we would, would talk about joint concerns about families. And so she's the one that, uh, you know, I think I will miss the most as far as the day-to-day -day association where we'll get together. And then, you know, Michael Coates has been a friend for a long time. It's just fun to hear him talk about his, his kids as they grow up and it kind of, brings back memories when my kids were that age. Dylan Carter worked there years ago and came back again, and he just has such passion for sports. I just love working with him and being around him. But then there are the reporters that come and go, and, and that can be a, a very rewarding to see them you know, just get better and better. Then there's some producers and some technical you know, people and the controller that I've been together with for almost the entire time I've been here that I've become good friends. So, I'll miss them. Um, I, I will probably miss the, uh, just the rewarding feeling of putting together a really good news report. And uh, just having to be on every night for the actual anchoring is something that I think I may miss also. What won't you miss? Well, <laughs> I won't miss the fact that I have missed so many things that go on in the evenings. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would catch 10 minutes of my son's soccer game or my daughter's you know, orchestra concert or things like that, or all kinds of events that go on in the evenings. You know, unless it's a Saturday evening, I pretty well was, was cut out of that. And I, I, uh, well, it'll be nice to be able to go to some function or dinner or whatever it might be, then not have to say, I've been watching, I've got to go, I've got to get back to the TV station. Yeah. yeah. Do you have plans, planning on a mission or anything? What? You know, I think that, I think that may come come down the road a little bit. At, at first, we will um, do some traveling to see kids that are scattered around the West. I have five kids and 15 grandchildren. So we'll, uh, especially in the winter months, I think we'll find ourselves visiting the ones that are in Arizona, you know, for a few weeks at a time sure. and get out of the cold. Uh, and then I have been teaching at BYU-Idaho, a couple of communication classes. I plan to do that, uh, the two tracks that do not fall in the middle of winter. Uh, uh, and uh, I've another little business on the side I've been doing for years from when my kids were teenagers uh, called JH Media, where we would go and we would shoot dance recitals, um, things like that, and uh, it was a nice little job for my kids. Then when they left, I've uh, actually employed a few of the BYU-Idaho students I've had to when I couldn't shoot something on a Friday night to go shoot Oh, that. that's great. All right, yeah. so if you're watching and you need someone to shoot your event, <laughs> yeah. JH Media, do you have a website or just through your Facebook page? You know, I, I don't have any of those things. Uh, I really, I really, you have, you're on Facebook, though, so I you can yes, message them on right. Facebook. You could do that, yeah. There you go. Uh, before we go, would you mind speaking to the, to the public about the importance of journalism and the news media, it's maybe especially this day and age, as you've seen decades mm -hmm. of this, how important it is for people to be informed. It is. You know, I, one of my favorite quotes is from Edward R. Murrow. I, you may remember he was, well, you weren't around then, then but he was one of the very first network anchormen. And uh, he had this, this one quote that I thought was wonderful. He said, this instrument, and this was back in the 1950s, this instrument of television can teach it can inform, yes, it can even inspire, but it can do so only to the extent that humans are determined to use it to those ends, otherwise it's just lights and wires in a box. And that's been my philosophy, that you reach so many people, uh, and to teach them you know, what's happening in the news and to inspire them once in a while, maybe to adopt a Wednesday's child, and to illuminate them about what's going on, I think is, 
has been the rewarding part for me, and that's why I chose to get into this business. And I think that you know people sometimes uh, give journalism a bad rap nowadays, but I still think that there are a lot of good, unbiased journalists who just want to get people the information. So I don't like when I hear some talk show hosts throw us all under the bus in one fell swoop, you know, the, the mainstream media, you know, the drive-by media kind of thing. And I, unfortunately, I think they have a point, up to a certain point, that things have changed that way. But uh, I just tell people, don't give up on us. The, the local news, I think all of the people that are doing news locally are trying to just do their jobs, to you know, let people know what is happening and to do it in a fair and balanced way as far as they can with the information that they have. So, um, yeah, don't give up on us. We really are trying our best. Amen. Are you going to keep the Throwback Thursdays coming after retirement? Uh, Please say yes. Oh. <laughs> because I, Well, I, I don't know that I will have that, uh, be able to be on the Channel 8 website anymore. And I don't know if I want to bring all of those three quarter inch tapes home. <laughs> <laughs> I found a lot of good stuff. I'll, I'll see, maybe, I, maybe I'll have enough good stuff. I'll still have You could relive the 42 years. I uh, probably could, yes. Uh, <laughs> Jay Hildebrandt, such a pleasure. One of the nicest guys, maybe the nicest guy in television news, uh, who's not full of himself, who's very humble, who's kind, and who has inspired a lot of younger people like me uh, to try to do a good job and remember the positive and the negative story. So congratulations on your retirement. Thank you, Dan. Good Appreciate luck. It. And thank you for watching. Have a good week.